So as you know, in the UK, we're still under the grips of COVID-19 and this lovely, lovely, stupendous Tory government has decided within the infinite knowledge to implement further restrictions within the hospitality industry, um, not allowing clubs to open, obviously putting more restrictions on bars and pubs to close at 10 p.m. due to a curfew in order to stem the effects of COVID. But if you've been paying attention, you would know that hospitality industry only contributes to guess what? 5% of cases um, concerning with COVID. So the rationale about closing clubs, the rationale about curfewing some of the bars that are open at the moment doesn't make any sense. And essentially a whole industry has been completely kaputzed due to their um, reluctance to look at the evidence available and due to their um, general desire to turn every club into Frank Manco or whatever it is that exists in Dawson. I think I mentioned it earlier on Twitter actually that Stoke Newton and Dawson should have been an indication for us Londoners to know exactly what direction this Tory government was going to go in. They were never fans of party times. They were never fans of nightclubs. They wanted to turn every club every sort of like stand-up dancey bar cocktail bar into a restaurant or a clothing store that's essentially what they wanted and they've got their wish now off the back of covid where they can essentially kill and strangle um, an industry slowly but surely by not providing any help and not providing any assistance um to an industry that you know is get away from the djs get away from the people that are in such essentially in front of the screens imagine the amount of people behind the scenes people that you know the operators within the venues the people that um you know uh whose livelihood is supported by the operation of said venues how they've been negative affected it's really really bad but fortunately um Shirelle uh, is that how you pronounce the name Shirelle or Shirelle 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 who's very popular here in the UK DJ and radio presenter got on BBC and essentially stood up for us DJs and made some very very good points on the BBC and I'm going to play some of her comments here via the Twitter let's go picture how have things changed for you in the last six months uh, the last six months for me have been brutal mental health wise and I know for a fact that a lot me of too. people feel the same way. So hearing everything that, you know, Rishi Sunak today was basically discussing with regards to, you know, we can't save all of the jobs and, you know, we can retrain really broke my heart and I'm sure it broke a lot of people's hearts at home, especially we've trained so long. To, to, to be in our jobs and we're, and we're completely suffering. And that's a problem too as well, right? It's like, I think, I said it prior, I think there is, there is, a, se there is a certain segment of the DJ um, Twitter sphere that kind of believes that the government should do bend over backwards in order to ensure every club, every job, every position is kept open. But I think there are some realists out there that obviously understand that we're in sticky times, everyone's going through it, no one is essentially... Uh, most people have been affected negatively due to COVID and uh, unless you're, you know, you're of affluent means. Some people have been, most people have been negatively affected. So there are some adjustments that are going to be needed to be made temporarily, right? Everyone understands that. If you have no gigs, if, you, if the last time you played was February or March, it probably would make sense to kind of pick up a part-time job in a supermarket, whatever it may be, just so you can pay the bills, right? And then the stuff opens up, you can get back to doing what you're doing. But the issue at hand here, it feels like, the Tory government is completely abandoning the nightlife industry, which is, I think, going to have a negative effect on the other side of things. Because it's fair enough going out and saying, hey, we can't keep any uh, any jobs. We, you know, Everyone has to retrain. No guarantee on keeping your job. Blah, de, blah, blah, blah. It's all fair enough to say that, right? That that makes complete sense. Cool. That, that There is some logic in that. But the other thing that's not fair about it, or the thing that doesn't really make any sense, there's no support for the clubs. There's no support for the bars or the institutions where we kind of work or where we kind of go to socialize, where we go to hang out. So what's to say once this thing is over, once COVID has finally uh, passed, that we're even going to have venues and places to go back and work? Where would they be? Where would the promoters be? Would the, how, have the promoters moved on into new areas? Have the festival organizers move on to new areas? Have the club owners move on to new areas? The event bookers, uh, the people that work behind the scenes, or even behind the bar, the bar backs, the bartenders, whatever it may be, people at the door, have they moved on? So that's the issue. It's all, it's all well and good telling people to retrain now, but what are you going to do for us going forward? Do you think people are doing that? Are they just leaving the industry, or are they? I mean, I mean, for you, you, yes. you could, you could do, you can't do streaming. You can't, no. you can't take it anywhere no. out of a live venue, right? I mean, you can do live streaming, but it's not profitable, and a lot of people do want to leave. I mean, for 
Mm, that's the thing. Now, the, the issue is, again, part of the problem to be a little bit of a... Uh, to play devil's advocate or to kind of... Not devil's advocate, to sort of give another opinion on this. The issue at the moment as well with DJing is quite similar to the issue that's happening in the restaurant industry where there are certain segments of the restaurant industry that was super resistant to technology, super resistant to, you know, the changing climate in the industry, that they've been kind of caught off guard with COVID, right? When COVID shuts down your ability to, you know, invite people into your place of work or your establishment to eat, you then have to kind of, you know, um, uh, make some adjustments and, you know, maybe cater your menu to a delivery service like Uber Eats or Deliveroo. But not every restaurant has that ability to do so, right? Because they nec not have necessarily put the protocols in place to enable them to do, to do that. Or more importantly, they haven't necessarily exposed the client or the customer to their goods prior to COVID on that platform. So it's very difficult for them you to start up doing Uber Eats now, competing with all the other restaurants that are out there, all the dark kitchens that exist that are not even walking restaurants that have been killing it and have precise menus that travel well in the back of someone's moped. It's very difficult then for you to decide to do it now. Same with the DJ thing, right? There are DJs have, that have been streaming. I follow a few of them on Twitch that are very popular on Twitch. Some of them not the best DJs, don't get me wrong. People I probably will never see and go play in a nightclub, but they stream on Twitch regularly, right? Five days a week, sometimes seven days a week, consistently on Twitch prior to COVID. So as soon as COVID struck, they were all well and good to continue doing to doing what they were doing. There are also some DJs that perform in big clubs and, you know, in, in, in big festivals and tour and stuff who were also supplementing their income with streaming when they, when they were back at home or in the studio. So those people or those DJs were more um, were in a far better position to kind of respond to the changing climate of the world. So that's the unfortunate reality of it, right? If you if you were if your only revenue stream, if your only way to make money, if your only way to play was to be in a nightclub, this is really going to affect you negatively. And unfortunately, there is no resolution. I see, in my opinion, again, I was really early on this in the beginning, not to not to be some sort of um you know some. Billy knows it or whatever but I said from the very onset when they were kind of telling us oh we're going to save our summer we're going to do all this nonsense that Boris Johnson was talking about I said this that's not going to happen we're going to be in this mess for a year at least at least and I thought a year meaning that we'll get back to normal in January but now look we're going to we're going to go into 18 months supposedly this new restriction that we've got now is going to go into March right so it's effectively 18 months so we're going to be um, under, under some kind of restriction so I knew that was the case and if that's the case you're going to have to make some adjustments that's just an unfortunate part of it now again these are just temporary adjustments I think long term that's the issue that Rishi actually needs to be pulled up on Rishi Sunak needs to be pulled up on hey what are you going to do for the clubs and establishments that we go and work at um once this thing is over are they still going to be open will we even have a fold will that place still exist once covid is over or will we have to start from scratch with no experience for myself i'm on the self-employment scheme and i sometimes find myself struggling i've got friends on exactly. universal credit and they're unable to either choose the choice of either paying rent or you know paying for food and basic amenities to actually keep them yeah it's terrible surviving. it's terrible i wish we were slightly like germany in regards to the package that they helped uh their people received in the creative industry mm -hmm. and unfortunately our government are not doing that the tories are letting us down and really unfortunately everything that they said today was completely deplorable well, they, they yeah, they are. They're letting us down. It's completely deplorable, but I just, I don't know, man. It's Tories doing what Tories do, in it? I'm really not that much. I, I'm not that surprised by it, really. I really am not. If anything, the best thing that we can kind of get from this is, again, to get some kind of immediate action plan as to what they're going to do for these establishments and for people that are working or the, the places that we go to work in. I just don't think they're ever going to come around to preparing a package for people that work within the creative or, or, or within the arts. It's just not going to happen, especially in the same way that Berlin does it or that Germany does it. It's just not going to happen. They're not set up for that. They're not that kind of government, unfortunately, man. It's just so, 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 so annoying, especially when you tell people to retrain. Imagine telling DJs that have been DJing for for 10 years right 10 years right to go and retrain that's the, I'm, not, I'm not saying because i've been i've been djing for 10 years right but I, but i've you know djing for 10 years you know playing your time here and there playing on the weekends at bars and clubs but i mean imagine if you're a professional dj you're touring for 10 years and now you've been told to retrain what are you going to retrain doing what can you what are you legitimately skilled to do in a workplace tell me what can you do yes you might have worked in a shop 10 years ago but that was 10 years ago who wants to hire you? Why would you even go? Like, are you even going to be a good employee? Let alone, are you are you employable? Are you going to be a good employee?
probably not. Like it's not gonna make any sense. You've been you've been moving to the beat of your own drum for the last ten years, working in your dream job that you've hustled your ass off. And again, that's the thing as well. It's so annoying for it. DJing, much like much much uh, DJing, like any other occupation in the arts, there's no straight path to becoming successful. There's no straight path to having a career in it, right? And imagine even for Cheryl is a good example, right? She's a very brilliant example. She blew up kind of off the back of that unfortunate incident that she had on Boiler Room, where she she played some sick tune and an overzealous DJ pulled it up, right? A fellow DJ that was on the scene, and it caused a bit of a uh, you know upper on social blah 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 but off the back of that it increased her profile people actually viewed the boiler room set that she'd done that was flipping incredible right and it kind of took her to the next level and then i think i think i remember seeing a tweet about her announcing that she's suddenly now got you know now i've decided to go full-time with my music right because i guess the the gigs were lining up well there was some money in the bank like yeah finally i've done it right i don't have to work in a flipping crappy um nine to five i can just commit to working uh, um being a professional dj my dream occupation i've secured it but it takes so long it's such a windy path like it's so difficult to do and okay of course unless you're amelie lens and you're you know and you're a formal model then you you could just you know you could just pop up the list but most people it just takes ages to do there's no there's no uh, direct route so to be told now once you finally got your dream in hand to let it go and then you're not given any assurances that once you kind of you know grow up and become an adult and say okay cool let's let's just temporarily put my dream to the side and let me go get a job in tesco's you still don't be given any assurances that that club that you played there is still going to be there have had this cultural recovery fund haven't yes. they and boris johnson mentioned live music today so you yes. you are on their mind i mean do you feel that this is going to get better you're on the, yeah. you're on the radar now or? in in a way yes but to be honest with you that particular fund that uh, you know that boris was talking about today is actually a week behind it's delayed so currently though of course it is of that, course you know, run clubs in london at the moment having really difficult conversations with their landlords about whether they're actually going to be able to pay you know their rent on time for this week jesus and Christ. they were expecting that money to come in it's jesus the Christ. whole industry yeah. you know music and live music is in complete dire straits and it's, it's very stressful Absolute for us. disarray. Absolute disarray, man. Absolute disarray. But yeah, big up Shiro. Um, she smashed it. Very good insight from her. But then on the flip side, we have this really odd kind of again, the beef within amongst DJs is so bizarre. And again, I've only noticed it now because due to COVID, I've kind of been more active on Twitter as opposed to any other social media platform. You know, unfortunately, I need to kind of step back a bit from there. But God, the infighting, man, it's just odd it's so odd because when you go on when you go on instagram and you go on and you kind of read through the comments of some prominent djs you just see nothing but love right nothing but adulation nothing but fans trying to get the attention of somebody that they look up to you go on twitter and you see mad people usually peers not even fans of this of the music peers that work within the industry calling out people for certain things da -da -da, being snarky saying mad shit there's loads of infighting and if ever there was a time where we can sort of like we should be gathering around each other and putting our arms around each other and sort of helping each other out and having sort of like a solid front it should be now it should be now right because i think apart from germany everyone's fucked right in europe like we're all fucked when it comes to live music especially in america right we're all completely fucked so we should be doing our best to help each other out but this is another example of this weird infighting that this really doesn't make any again i get it in some regard because it's, it's the blessed madonna uh, aka also known as or the artist formerly known as the black madonna she kind of divides opinion but god this is really unnecessary so i guess black madonna tweeted the following she said i guess in response to the current conversation going around which richie sunak said about you know you need to go and retrain and get new jobs if you're working in the arts she said something along the lines of according to this tweet here and what precisely would I or any other artist retrain for? Um, I spent my entire adult life retraining uh, as a copywriter, restaurant manager, data entry person, and every other job you can imagine. I worked to get out of those jobs and to do what I'm great at. We all know how to do day jobs, right? And then this guy um, called Dr. Matthias, who I follow on social, who's a pretty interesting follower because he has some spicy takes. Um, he says the following, he quotes it and says, there's something really abject about DJs with a substantial amount of wealth LARPing, live action role playing, in, in case you're unfamiliar with the acronym, as struggling artists, dot, dot, dot. Do they actually need to retrain or can they just safely ride out the pandemic with their assets? Uh, again, it's so disgusting of a question. Again, in general, pocket watching is something I've never been a fan of. I understand it during these kind of um, 
bad times that we're going through you know when you're really struggling the only thing that you can do or the only thing that you kind of reach near to is somebody near you that's sort of thriving and sort of pull them down i get that kind of inclination but this is this is of no benefit or of no use to anybody breaking the whole thing down um in in, in this into actuality and again this is coming from somebody that had a lot of spicy things to say about the business techno guys going around and touring at the beginning of, the, of covid but legitimately right unless you're germany unless you're france maybe not not now because they've gone around the lockdown again but especially when possession was going on most places are fucked right for the year are done right and that affects everybody in every industry and it affects everybody on in any kind of level of wealth or any kind of level of richness or yeah say rich yeah no wealth wealth you'll be okay if you're rich you're still gonna be still gonna struggle because most of the time from what i've from my own experience talking to people who have you know who live in swanky apartments and drive really nice cars unfortunately some of these people don't actually own anything outright most of the stuff they have is just leased because I think, you know, the thinking is because you earn a lot of money, you can afford to lease things. You don't need to, you know, have an asset depreciate in your garage, even if it is a Lamborghini, just because you have, just just to say you have it. You could just go, you know, rent different cars, stay in different lavish apartments and keep it moving because you know there's constant flow of money coming in due to your gigs, isn't it? So if you're a big DJ and you're playing every gig you're playing, you're getting 30 grand in your account, you can probably excuse yourself to, you know, paying 10 grand rent and five grand for your car note. It is what it is. But the only way to sustain that is with a steady income of gigs, right? So with the world completely shut down, even if you are at the top of that sort of quote unquote rich level, you're still going to be suffering because there's no money coming in. So the apartment that you've can, you signed a lease for for the next two years, the car that you signed a lease for, for however many years you signed a car lease for, those notes need to be paid. So you need to play in order to sustain those bills. That's why those guys, I'm assuming, and girls went out to go play these um, ill-advised play graves and essentially set back countries, you know, months, if not years in their COVID recovery. Super selfish, super entitled. It is what it is. People do what they want to do. But it wasn't done from just a reckless sense of abandon. It was obviously done from a need, like they needed the money. Of course, it's kind of shown them up because it, you know, you've know you seen that a lot of these people aren't necessarily in for the music or in it for the culture, which they never were, right? If you're one of the five top 5% 5 earners, I'd very much think that you know DJing is just a job for you at the moment, right? You probably lost the love for it a long, long time ago. There are the special few that exist that probably do still have the love for it, but I would assume you spend too much, you spend too long in something, you get exposed to too much of the good stuff at the top, you're probably going to get you know numb to it and it's just going to come a job cool but they still need to make money there's nothing wrong with that right everyone needs to make money everyone needs to make an income and at the moment our governments worldwide are not doing a good enough job in order to provide us with any kind of idea as to when we can return to the clubs and bars so anybody is allowed to complain whether you're scream whether you're uh, the blessed madonna whether you're Emily lent who are despised whether you're peggy goo who are despised right these people who are currently you know make maybe not peggy goo because their family are you know, wealthy and they're from South Korea, maybe they can, you know, supplement her income. But again, it's all pocket watching. And that's G-A-Y. That's not something that I condone in any way, shape or form. Don't pocket watch. Look after yourself, especially now during COVID. No one's looking after you. No one's looking after us. No one's looking after our community. No one's after anyone. No one's looking after us. We have to look after ourselves and look after the people around us. That's what I think we should do. And I think going after people on, online, telling them they're LARPing and that they should be okay with their riches. What, how do you know? What do you, how do you know what she has to pay for? What, what do you know about her bills? What do you know about her life? Like, it's just not fair. Do you know what I mean? It really does not fair, this kind of infighting that we have at the moment. And it serves no purpose. Once we get out of this, the other side, if you want to go out calling out all the rich individuals in, in, in DJ world, do it. I don't give a shit. But at the moment where we all need to kind of present a united front, this probably isn't the best way to go about it. And again, he continues doing some other things. Yes, yeah, yeah, no point even getting into that. But, you know, I just don't see how that's constructive, man. I really, really don't, man. I, I wish we could be a little bit more... Um, I wish we could kind of just, you know, do away with the infighting and sort of do our best to try and rescue and save this dying industry that's being led to that's being allowed to sort of bleed out on the table man because like, that's essentially what the Tories are going to do especially here in the UK or in most places in Europe except for Germany right they're not going to give a toss about you know live music venues um so yeah let's stop with the infighting and just be friends again at least temporarily